Alrighty, folks. Welcome back to Lost Odyssey. We are here, and we are going to experience Beyond the Wall from A Thousand Years of Dreams. Beyond the Wall. The wall is being demolished. Sledgehammers resound on both sides. The wall marked the national border for decades until yesterday. Border might not be the right word, however. Originally, both sides were part of a single nation. The country became divided owing to differences in ideology, and the two sides remained so mutually antagonistic that a high, thick wall had to be built. Those days are gone now. A year ago, the leaders of the two sides shook hands in a historic reconciliation. Today, after much preparation and coordination, the wall that symbolizes the two sides' antagonism is being demolished. The sounds of hammering signals the end of opposition and extols the beginning of peace. Come on, give me a break, says Unguno, spitting on the ground and glaring at the backs of people swarming over the wall. Look at them, smiling like idiots. I can't believe it. He glances by his, by Kaim at his side, as if to say, right? His still boyish face wears a scowl of disgust. Tell me, Kaim, you've been to a lot of different countries and seen all kinds of people. Can people just take years of hatred like that and throw it out the window? Kaim gives him a sour smile instead of replying. Ungono is a young man, the first person that Kaim became friends with shortly after he arrived in this border town. He is pleasant enough, except for his stubborn hatred of the people from the other side. One lousy handshake, and I'm out of a job. I mean, really, give me a break. Ungono used to be a border guard. In other words, one of the men assigned to keep watch on the wall. He had volunteered, eager to kill anyone who dared to come over the wall from the other side. If his sp superiors had permitted it, he would have gladly crossed over and attacked the other side rather than waiting to fend off an invasion. As a mandatory part of the reconciliation, however, the border guards were disbanded. Unlike his brothers-in-arms, who quickly started new lives for themselves, Ungono was left behind by the changing times. Tell me, Kaim. Can people be allowed to just slough off their resentments so easily? Do they just not give a damn? Kaim does not respond to this. He knows that Nguno is a victim of the age of confrontation. Still, just a young man. A boy, even. Nguno has been through condition had been thoroughly conditioned since childhood to view the other side as as the enemy. Watch out. The other side could attack at any time. Watch out. The other side are all cruel, cold-hearted villains. Watch out. If the other side ever invaded us and occupied our towns, they'd burn down our houses, steal our property, kill our men, and assault our women. Watch out. The day is not far off when they will be invading us. It could be three days from now, or it could be tomorrow. They might be climbing the wall today, this very moment. Watch out, they've already sent their spies among us, and you can't tell for sure who they are. They're the ones who extol and sympathize with the other side by word and by deed. Watch out, they're probing for the slightest gaps in our psychological armor. Remain alert, be ready to draw your sword at any moment. Watch out, watch out. Watch out! Watch out. There was much to be found out about the other side in the history books distributed in the schools on this side. The pictures of the people from the other side portrayed them all as ferocious demons. I'm not the only one, you know. All of us were taught the same thing. So how come everybody but me is so happy about the wall coming down? Ungono asks looking utterly bewildered by these new developments. Again and again, he repeats his disbelief. Finally, Kaim cannot help but respond to him. 
You were too pure, he says. What? It's not your fault, Ungono. It's the ones who filled your pure, honest heart with hatred. Wait a second now, Kaim. The animals who live on the other side of the wall are the ones who did that to me. The horrible things they do. Kaim cuts him short. Have they ever done anything horrible to you? Well, sure. No, not really to me, but... Just what do you hate the other side for? Well, you see, Unguno is momentarily at a loss for words until all he can do is, r is raise his voice and blurt out, It's true, though. The whole bunch of them are just horrible people. He folds his arms in a decided pout. How are they horrible? What have you ever seen them do? When? Where? Unguno stammers and splutters. Have you ever even met someone from over there? Kaim demands to know. Ungono hangs his head and shakes it from side to side. With a grim smile, Kaim says, Well, I have, and they're not all devils or demons or anything of the sort. How could they be? You also used to be part of the same country. But that stuff is beside the point anyway. Countries and races and tribes, you're all human beings. You're all the same. Ungono stays silent hanging his head. Cheers erupted the wall. The wall has that has separated the two worlds for decades has just now been broken through. Representatives from this side and the other side walk through the opening, greet each other with smiles and firm handshakes, and embrace. The cheers grow louder, and the people, mostly members of the younger generation, gather in circles here and there, expressing their joy. Unguno glares down at his own shadow and asks Kaim, So what should I do now? All I've ever done is hate. All I've ever known to how to do is hate them. Kaim gives Unguno a pat on the shoulder and says, It is not too late to change. You can start now. Can I? You can. I'm sure of it. Kaim is sure because he knows what it is like when both sides were a single country. It was a kindly nation, by no means rich. It was yet a happy country of compassionate people. I'm telling you, Ungono, people can change. If you say so. Look over there, Ungono. Look at those people enjoying themselves. Hesitantly, Ungono raises his head. Around the wall, a celebration is beginning. Young people are dancing, singing, toasting each other, engaging in conversation, and all of them used to be the companions of Ungonos, who received the same education he did. No doubt, the young people on the other side were similarly educated to hate. What do you see over there? Demons? Devils? Unguno shakes his head and lets the tightness go out of his shoulders. I'm beginning to wonder, Kayam. Why, until now, I've been so... Kayim pats him on the shoulder again to signal that he understands. People can change, he says. They can change from hating to loving and from loving to hating. Yes, Kaim knows about that as well. He saw how such a wonderful, unified country was divided in two at the end of a violent civil war. Don't change anymore, Kaim says. Not just to Ungono, but to all of the smiling young people. A young girl hesitantly approaches Ungono. She is from the other side. She holds a plate full of cookies. Have some if you'd like, she says. I baked them this morning. The cookies are heart-shaped. Urged on by the smiling Cam, Ungono reaches out for a cookie, his face bright red. Thanks, he says shyly and takes a bite of his cookie. Good, she asks. Unguno turns a deeper shade of red and says, delicious. White birds cut across the blue sky. From the other side to this side. From this side to the other. The white birds sail through the sky almost joyfully, as if to tell the people below, in the beginning, there were no borders. That was a straight up Berlin and the wall and Germany after the war. And 
I I I I can't imagine having pent up and and been taught that much hatred for the other side of the wall, and in reality, it was just a difference in opinion, a different a difference in viewpoint. But it still took it took forever for the wall to come down. Anyway. Hope you folks enjoyed that. If you did, hit that like button down below. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and checking out some of my other content. And as always, I will catch you folks in the next episode. Stay frosty out there.